Thank you guys all for coming. I'm really excited to be here. I haven't put on lip gloss in a full year. This is a very big moment. Um, to give a little context about myself and why I'm so excited to be here, I've been in music supervision in, in a couple different capacities for the last 13 years, first at MTV and then Vice, and most recently at MRC Media, which is Billboard Hollywood Reporter and Vibe. Uh, I found out in October that I was going to be laid off with a three-month transition period and quickly pivoted um, to start an LLC and, and pile on a bunch of freelance work. So I was particularly excited to meet Eric and participate in this um, as during this climate, which is of course a disaster for those of us who are unemployed, but obviously um, we're all feeling it. It's inevitable that we're going to see the tides changing and feel some sort of effects um, in our industry. So I was really excited to meet Eric. So Eric is a New York based executive coach, CEO and founder of GEM. For the last 16 plus years, he's been working to improve the quality of lives of executives around the globe, working in both nonprofit and for-profit organizations with uh, companies or places like the White House, Spotify, Bank of America, NBC, and Vogue. Eric's experience and coaching style have inspired a multitude of executives towards articulating their missions and achieving their goals. Eric is a graduate of Columbia University and currently sits on the board of the Columbia Alumni Outreach Committee. He's also the leader of the Columbia Career Coaches Network. He's been deeply involved in the nexus of New York cultural business and global change during this new century. And Eric, I will hand it over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. That was a really great pre uh, presentation of my uh, bio that I wrote myself. So thank you. Um, okay, are we ready? So um, this is a, a, a sort of the precursor to thinking about your career in a way maybe you've never thought about your career. Okay, and what I like for everyone to really consider is that they are the hero of their own story. Okay, and if any of you remember reading any heroic stories, there's a beginning, there's the naivete that starts, and then the, the hero starts out on a journey, and then something bad happens, and there's a challenge, and the hero grows in times, and they learn through those challenges um, many different skills and to overcome. So for one thing, we've just been through a global pandemic, right? Or we're still going through it. And so this is, I like to say, or think about as, this is an opportunity for you as you navigate your career to think about all these opportunities to overcome challenges. No heroic story would be all that interesting if there were in challenges. So number one, you wanna put in that mindset when you're thinking about your career. If it was completely smooth sailing the whole time, then it wouldn't be a very interesting story and it would never be a movie. So um, that's, that's sort of the framework in which we're gonna talk about these things. So if you can think already as we're getting started, think about something that's happened to you over the last year, just like Ricky was talking about what's happened to her recently and the challenges and how she's overcoming them, that we're all facing that. And what's amazing about this time in a positive way is it is relatable globally. Anyone who would tell you that their life has been smooth sailing since last April or March, I mean, I don't know what planet they live on, not this one. Okay, so what I want uh, all of you to think about is consider someone living or dead that you consider in your life to be a hero from a career perspective or even from an overall perspective. And what you can do is put your answer in the chat. I'm gonna share out some of the answers. And they don't have to be alive today. So uh, Ricky says Oprah, thank you, Ricky. Don't be shy, type it in. Okay, we got Tom Hanks, Reese Witherspoon, Hilder, Stevie Wonder, Timbaland, Tom York, Beyonce, David Bowie, Billy Joel, Herbie Hancock, Amy Grant. I love Amy Grant. Um, Sade, <laughs> David Foster, Kamala Harris. Okay, so what? So these are really great ideas. Keep them coming while we're coming. Write them down somewhere for yourself. The idea is the journey that you're, the heroic journey you're taking is not something that no one's ever done before. In fact, 
you can look to people in their own lives and their own stories and then relate it to your own journey and follow what's going on. So for example, for me, as a life coach and a career coach, Benjamin Franklin is one of my heroes. If you know, Benjamin Franklin did a lot of work on designing his own life, his own moral value system, which he tracked, he had 13 principles, and he created the post office. So if I read a book about Benjamin Franklin, it can inspire me as I take my own career journey. So number one you really wanna do is uh, start to research, you can start with Wikipedia or you can read a bio um, about your hero that you can also follow their life when thinking about your own, okay? So that way, you know, I'm your coach here, but I'm not with you every day. So this is a good way to, to support that. Okay, um, now we are in a period of significant change and, and that's Jeff Bezos sitting in a little room with his Amazon, um, just in case you didn't know. Uh, so this time is a very highly evolutionary time. Things really are born now that 10 years from now are worth a billion dollars and everyone was like, why didn't I think of that? So for example, Uber and Airbnb all were created after the financial crisis in 2008. So what's happening right now, and one of you or many of you are actually even thinking about it, is new ideas are being born out of this challenge that we're living through that ultimately will be great businesses, great ideas, great artistic and creative things that are all going to be, you know, born today or yesterday or last week or a month ago. All right, so now what I thought would be helpful because we have people of lots of different ages is to give you some historical context for how did we all end up sitting in our houses on a Zoom call, okay? And if you understand the historical context, it can help you to predict where the future might, might go. Okay, so for example, in the 1970s, you really had the beginning of per personal computing where you know they used to have these big computers somewhere else and then all of a sudden you could have one in your house but very few people had them. Um, and that started to infiltrate the business world and then companies started to outsource work. So it used to be that all work was just done in one place. But with computers, you could start to do work in different places. Plus, you didn't have to leave all the information just at the office, okay? Then in the 90s, you start to get the internet adoption in our, you know, in our personal lives as well as in business. So therefore, um, work could be spread even farther across the, across the world, okay? Um, then in the 2000s, number one, at the end of the 90s, you had the fall of the Berlin Wall. So uh, before the fall of the Berlin Wall, there were many countries you couldn't even go to if you were in, uh, in the West, right? And now you started to have the ability to, to travel everywhere in the world and then the prices of airline flights went way down, right? It got really cheap. You could, you know, uh, Ryanair in Europe, you know, you can go anywhere for like $12. Um, and so you really saw this expansion of globalization. Okay, then in the 2010s, you see uh, social media, digital connections. So not only could you travel all over the world, you could see the world from, from your house and you could connect with people uh, globally, right? And then, miraculously, all that spreading out all over the world in 2020, in a way, came back to haunt us because now what happens if there is a virus in one place in China, it spreads throughout the world in the course of two or three months, okay? So we're now seeing a bit of a pullback from that massive expansion. But what makes this time very different than, let's say, the Black Plague, where we didn't have science to help us solve it, we also didn't have technology where all many people in certain industries could pivot to this model in which people could work from home or work remotely and then connect, right? So we never would have come up with this solution. And this solution has positives and negatives to it. So this just gives you a sort of a context for uh, how we got here and the good and the bad of it. Okay, this is, I'm, now, I'm not a super expert on this, so I got information on it. So if anything I'm saying is wrong, you know, you can just put it in the chat. But um, just for your industry, things that, uh, to think about it, the evolution here is in the 1970s, maybe a supervisor was more of an internal or administrative role. 
And then really in the 1980s, you had the concept of a mu music supervisor. And then in the 90s, you had the explosion of a popular so soundtrack where like that was really known. It wasn't just like about the movie, but it was also about the sound soundtrack. And then in the 2000s, you see this skill set transferring into gaming, advertising, and cable TV. And then in the 2010s, you have this ability to access this music digitally, uh, which you see mirrors the other evolutions. And then in the 2020s, I don't know yet, okay? But we're gonna figure that out together today, okay? So in order to figure out where you're going in your career, it's important to understand the context uh, from, from whence you came. Okay, so now we're gonna do the first exercise together. Hopefully you have a pen and paper or on your computer, you can open up a Word document. Um, or uh, you can do it in your notes on your phone. Um, so in order to first figure out what it is you want to do with your career, you have to know how human beings work. And human beings, actually, it's a pyramid. The first thing that human beings are driven by are their values, what they fundamentally believe. If they live according to their values, then they care about their needs. And their needs are food and water and shelter. And if they have food, water, and shelter, then they get their wants. And their wants might be a nice car, a fancy trip, a big party. So at the core, and this is, coaching has been around for about 30 years, the core motivator for human beings is understanding what they value, okay? But the issue is we all grow up and no one ever tells us what our values truly are. We might grow up in a specific religion or a specific culture, and the culture and the religion are telling you what your values are, but you don't get access to them on your own. But when you work with a coach, that's one of the first things we work with you on. So I'm going to show you some words. And what I want you to do is in each section of words, write down the word that resonates with you of the words I'm showing you. There's not going to be that many. But don't use your head. Use your gut, okay? If you use your head to think about a word, you might think, well, this is what other people would approve of if I use this word, okay? So here's, here's four words first. To lead, mastery, to relate, be sensitive. So feel the four words. And if there's one word that really resonates with you of the four, write it down. But don't write down all four. So pick, pick your top one. Okay. All right. The next, be spiritual. To teach. And to win. And I want to do a quick shout out to Kristen. Yes, this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs but added on to the bottom of it is the values. So I like that, that's good. Okay, the next, next four words, adventure, beauty, to catalyze, and to contribute. So pick one of the four. Okay, and the last, to create, to discover, to feel. So pick one of those, okay? So at this point, pretty much uh, you should have four words or three. If anybody wants to put in the chat and share the words that they picked, the three or four words they picked, um, it's good for me to see what's coming up. So go ahead and share them. Let's see what we have. Okay, so Kristen, to lead, be spiritual, to contribute, to feel, good. Okay, Matt, you guys are doing great. Awesome. Sensors are okay. Good. So this is a process um, about starting to connect with what naturally motivates you. Okay. And sometimes you can see in the four words, like for example, Michelle has mastery, win, catalyze, create. So like mastery and win are, are kind of common. So you're going to see some words that are common and then maybe something that's complementary. okay? So what do you do with this? Okay, spring is having difficulty choosing. So if, you, for example, if you're having difficulty choosing, if they all feel right or it's 
too confusing where you really want to try to shut your head down about thinking about the words, okay? This is, is, is meant to be very uh, uh, spontaneous because that's, that's where it comes from, okay? Okay, so what you're going to do with these words, aside from writing them down, is you're going to get a post-it note, if you don't have them, order them, and take the four words and just stick them up on a wall somewhere. Make them somewhere visible, okay? The goal is to start to connect with the things that uh, you value, okay? And that um, will start the process of connecting to that. Now, ultimately, when I work with uh, clients, what we do is we turn that into a sentence, okay? So, for example, my sentence is to inspire myself and empower others with justice and calm to achieve seemingly impossible goals, okay? So I took my four words and I turned it into a sentence and then I resonate with the sentence. So mainly, I want to inspire myself and empower others, okay? And that's, I know that because that's what I do for a living. So I feel that energy, okay? So um, this, is, this is at the heart of starting a career journey or, or restarting one or realizing that the one you were on was the wrong one because it didn't resonate with your values, okay? All right, now we're gonna do another fun exercise because so now we got like, what are my values? But then I remember I talked about needs and wants. So needs and wants are another big driver for being naturally motivated, okay? So what we're gonna do, um, and Jennifer, I will be able to share with you at the end um, how to turn it into a mission statement. I will not forget that. Okay, so in today's society, people are taught to like things and dislike them, okay? But when you're five years old, you know, you love something or you hate it. So by the time we get older, we are taught to suppress exactly how much we care about something, okay? So what I want us to first access is things we love and things we hate. Okay, so let, I'll do an example. Let's start with food. So think about a food you love. And I'll give you an example. I love black olives in a can. Okay, I don't have to cook it. I can just open up the can and I can eat every single black olive. Okay, I hate black licorice. I kind of hate people that love black licorice. That's how much I hate black licorice. Okay, so if you like, please share in the chat. Share me a food you love and share me a food you hate, okay? And be specific. So don't just say, I love pasta. No, Angela, give me more about that pasta. <laughs> no, Angela. I love sweet potatoes. I eat them every day. Okay, good. Thank you, Ricky. I also hate black licorice and those who like it. I'm telling you, Noel. Noel, I now like you because you don't like that either. Okay, pork parsley. Um, I hate marzipan, right? Because it looks sweet, but it's gross. Okay, love French fries, love popcorn with butter, Jackie with butter, the popcorn. Okay, all right, love tacos. Okay, but I want to show you guys are doing great, but I want to see more specifics, okay? So let's, let's keep going on this, we're having fun. Now we're gonna do an actor or an actress that you love or you hate, okay? So in the field of entertainment, I mean, I love Meryl Streep. Everybody loves Meryl Streep. Like, you can't not love Meryl Streep, okay? I personally hate Anne Hathaway. I hate Anne Hathaway. I love her movies, but I hate Anne Hathaway, okay? All right, so go ahead, share, like. Someone loves peanut butter. Oh, see, now, Angela said she doesn't like Kevin Hart. <laughs> okay. And remember, this is just an exercise. This is not meant to offend anyone. This is about accessing that feeling, okay? So the, the one more thing you can do now is think about something at work that you love to do and something you hate doing, okay? So oftentimes what happens is we get into jobs where we loved it at first because we were doing something, and then all of a sudden all the things we hate uh, start to add up. Right? So I love, I love public speaking. I hate when people spell check me. It makes me crazy. It doesn't matter anymore, okay? Don't spell check me. 
There, there, and there. It all sounds the same. All right. Love teaching kids music. <laughs> I hate Claire Danes. <laughs> These are funny. Um, all right. Yes. Um, so, uh, Spring wrote, tolerations add up and they make me crabby. So what happens, and this is something we work on in coaching, is not letting tolerations build up. So what happens is you get confused. And this has happened to a lot of people I'm working with in COVID, which they loved their job because they traveled, they met people, and they were at dinners and all that. And then all of a sudden everything got smushed down into the only thing that's left is the thing they hate. They hate. Okay? All right. So remember what we've done so far. We've gotten a sense of like, what we value, right? Uh, and we also understand that we have wants and we have diswants. That's a new word, I just made it up. Um, and understanding the difference is gonna help you access more where you wanna go on your hero's journey because you wanna do that, okay? Okay, good, all right. So, oh. All right, so now we're gonna do another game. You guys are doing great. This is very participatory. So, there's a saying in hockey, which I've never played, um, which is follow the puck, okay? Which is you don't, you don't try to hit the puck where it is, you gotta figure out where it's going. Well, so the same thing can apply when you're thinking about your career future. So for example, there's probably a horse and buggy person from 1905 who was like, I'm gonna be the best horse and buggy person ever, but then they invented the car. So he or she totally missed the boat. Or people who were involved with the you know, silent movies when there became talkies, or video killed the radio star, right? So the idea is you wanna get ahead of what, where society is moving and where technology is moving so that um, you can think about your career future. You can think about your career future with an eye towards where the world is going. Okay. And I want to just tell you kind of a rule, uh, which I like to abide by. If you want to be a master in any career, you have to do it for 12 years, not 12 weeks, not a year and two months, 12 years. Okay. And oftentimes what happens when I coach people after 12 years, they actually get bored with that thing because they've mastered it. And then they want to go and do something else. Okay. So, um, what I'd like us to think about now is we got to kind of figure out and we got to brainstorm about where the world is headed. Okay. Where is it going? And I mean, I did this before COVID and it was like, oh, well, in two years, you know, we're going to have drone groceries, you know, a dr drone's going to deliver your groceries, which is cool. It still hasn't happened yet. Um, but now what I want you guys to do is think about um, what might happen in the world of different areas, even if it's not your area, but it's a way to get us thinking in, in these area. So, for example, where is the world headed with respect to public health? Like, are we going to have universal health care? Are we going to have a vaccine every day? Are we going to have a virus all the time? And we're always going to be having to, you know, monitor what we do or wear masks. So where is the state of public health going to end up? Okay. Number two, where are we going to end up in three or five years with government and politics? We've had a very divisive period. Maybe we're going to have more collaboration. Maybe we're going to get to be able to vote online. You know, because you can do all your credit card stuff online, but somehow you can't vote online, right? Uh, technology. What ha what might be coming up? You know, we have a lot going on with AI. Um, we have a lot going on uh, in the world with wearable technology. Maybe we'll be able to, like, transport ourselves somewhere else. Okay. Where are we going with entertainment, right? In five years. Are we going to have an overload of of the entertainment we have? Are we gonna want everything to be live because we've been so in this way, right? Um, there's been a proliferation, obviously, of, of entertainment channels. The welfare system. So there's this thing called UBI, Universal Basic Income. Technically, that's kind of sort of happened in the United States because of so many people getting unemployment benefits for so long, plus, for example, Andrew Yang, who's running for mayor of New York City, wants everyone to get $2,000 a month just for living. And um, so are we going to have a larger welfare system or is it going to be like everyone for themselves? 
where do you see that going? And finally, food service. So for example, where are we headed with healthy food, all that. So what I'd like you guys to do is share in the chat on any of the six that I've listed, where, where, what's something, and make it even ridiculous that could be happen in three to five years. Because if anyone told me three years ago that I would be talking to all of you on a Zoom call and, you know, people could be all over the world, I would have laughed in your face. Okay. Bridget, drone, food delivery. More holograms. Yes, good. What else? Solar-operated cars. Anything else? Anything in... Uh, Self-driving cars. Okay. Now, I want you to think about, that's, these are good. Now think about in your, uh, in your industry, something that's going to be true three to five years from now. Okay, so um, like Ricky said, AI tra trying to replace music supervisors, but it's not working. Everything will be digit. Nanobots will cure disease. Yes, we're going to live a lot longer. Okay, dashboards for all rights holders to understand where payments are, right? Um, one thing to really think about that's obviously taking off now is uh, blockchain and, and crypto, which is a new form of tracking, contracting. So for example, at some point, uh, let's say a Van Gogh painting will be able to be sold in pieces. You will own a percentage of it. And because of uh, blockchain, you'll be able to track ownership digitally about what portion of a Van Gogh you own. Okay? So there's a lot going on in technology that's going to deal a lot with music rights and with entertainment rights and arts rights um, and those blending together. Okay. So now when you're thinking about your career future, I want to break it down for you, like what we've done to get us to this point. So we're like, okay, wait a minute. I'm, a, I'm on a journey. I'm a hero and I am the actor in this play, right? This isn't happening to me. I'm thinking and acting about where I want to go and I'm going to have challenges. It's going to rain and snow on me, but I, I'm in charge. Okay. Number two is I know what matters to me. I have values that I hold dear that are in, un, inscrutable, meaning they are what they are, okay? And I know what I want and I know what I don't want. And I honor that in myself and I'm not apologetic about it, right? And then what we just said was, okay, again, I'm going on the journey, but where am I going? Well, I gotta figure out where the world is headed. Not what I did in the past, not what I did before, because what I did before won't be the same. I mean, I want to remind all of you this. Whenever I hear the word new normal, it makes me crazy. There is no new normal. We're not going back to the old way. I work with coach CFOs. They tell their employees that we're going to reopen the office in March and then June and then November, right? Why do they keep moving the date? Because if they don't have offices, that saves them 15, 20% of their overhead, okay? And so um, we really are moving in a totally new direction, and you wanna get your head around that. And that's not a worrying exercise, that is a thinking and imagining opportunity. And that's a little bit why I gave you a look at the past, right? Because you can see the world, way the world evolved over time. And you can actually listen to uh, things like Bill Gates was saying in the 70s and 80s, and he was talking about all these things. Now granted, like he invented the, you know, the personal computer, so he kind of knew where this could be, okay? And with all these things, so don't give up, is every single thing, there's an unintended consequence. Meaning, like for every good thing, like the internet was supposed to be good, right? There's, it also has a negative consequence. So it's not going to be perfect one way or the other way. Remember, even let's say with social media, the purpose of the algorithm was to show you more of what you liked because you liked it. Okay. But when you got that into the political realm, it became more of what you agree with gave you more of what you agreed with. And then ultimately what you end up with, you're in a bubble of only thinking what you think, right? So that was 
the people that created the internet all those years ago probably didn't think that this was the unintended con consequence, but it was, okay? So that's why it's so important to manage your career as we go through these times, because something that looks good today might have uh, not so good tomorrow. Okay? All right. That was good. Yeah, so Shannon, the future is a hybrid of the past and the present. Yes, it is. And then a little magic sauce is something we don't even know. Okay. So now what I want to work with you guys on, this is going to be some real good uh, practical help, which is how to manage your life, right? So somebody, some genius, some long time ago, invented uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like somehow decided to break up the the sun going and the moon, the sun, the moon, the sun, the moon, into, into days, right? And track it that way, right? Now they didn't have the internet and they didn't have calendars and they didn't, and they didn't know. So we human beings live like that for a long time. So what's happened during COVID, and I'm sure this happened to some of you, I think it happened to me in April, it was like, I didn't really know what day it was. And I didn't know what the next day was, right? So we really lost our ability to cut time, okay? But in order to be productive, in order to have a sense of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it's really important to create really great habits around your uh, your schedule. And I'm going to give you some good tips. I've worked on my own for 15 years. So I know what it's like to work from home and have to make the most of every day, every day and be productive. Plus I'm a coach, so I kind of have to do that. Okay. So, um, let's talk about some good daily habits. So number one is meditate. Okay. Meditation. There's some good apps. There's headspace and calm and think about meditation it's like imagine your brain has too many apps open. You know how when you have too many apps open on your phone, your phone slows down or it breaks? So a daily meditation, even if it's three minutes, allows you to reset. Okay? Stretching because we're all, you know, not moving physically enough. Um, find, and it's so important, you better have a happy friend. What's a happy friend? Somebody who says, don't worry, it's going to get better. Okay, energy transfers very quickly between people. Facebook did an experiment where they only allowed people to see negative posts. They did it to 700,000 people. That negativity spread to 2.4 million people within an hour. So I wrote, I'm so sad. And then before you know it, it was spreading around. So making sure on a daily basis, you're connecting with a happy friend. Track your eating, write it down. This is what I had for breakfast, this is what I had for lunch. Food affects our mood. Limit our social media use, okay? So that means, you know, it tells you how many hours you've been on Instagram or whatever the case may be, but really think about it. Also, this new app Clubhouse has come out, which is voice only, which is really taking off, which is interesting because you don't have to look fancy to get on it. And there's, so far, there's less trolling because, you know, it's people actually speaking to other people. Um, have a workout routine and some multivitamins. So like really this theme for daily is kind of like taking care of your body. All right, so now let's talk about once a week. So once a week, and I always usually recommend to do this on Saturday or Sunday, is this is like space time to stop and reflect before the next week comes along. So what I recommend is you review your finances. So there's an app called Mint, and there's a couple other ones where it'll download your, the data from your bank account and it'll keep all the transactions and you can see where you're spending your money and where you should spend your money. And if you're not working because you're unemployed, it's really important to do this because a paycheck's not coming through every week. Um, read or listen to self, some self-help positivity things. You know, there's tons of podcasts. Um, try to do a weekly news summary, not a daily news summary. Because, you know, the news is trying to get you to do clicks all the time. Um, so you really want to uh, uh, take time to reflect on what's really happened. Because sometimes really nothing happened in a week. Okay, plan your week. What I do is I write down every meeting I'm going to have during the week. A lot of you might feel victimized by your week because you didn't plan it in advance. Let's go back to our hero story. The point being is we that we can define how our week's going to go, and way more than we used to. Next, stop doing something. 
So don't just think about what you're going to start doing, trying to be so productive. Also think about what you're going to stop doing. Okay. And the final one, once a week, forgive someone. What, what do I mean by that? We are all getting more and more passive aggressive via email to be hostile with each other. We were bad enough before COVID, but now I can write you the nastiest thing and I never have to see you. Okay. So what happens is that builds up in your, in your spiritual, emotional brain, what someone said to you. So by forgiving, it's like once a week, let go of something because it starts to build up. Okay. So that's some good weekly habits. Um, all right. Now let's do some monthly ones. Okay. All right. Number one, now make a budget for the month. So do like right before, like the last week of February, make a budget for March. Okay, remember, helping you with like trying to really create our number. First of all, so this is all recorded. And so you're going to be able to rewatch it to remember some of these things. And um, community. So this one's a doozy. So... We all maybe met at bars and restaurants. We talked to our neighbors or we were with our family. And all that's broken down significantly. So community is something you're going to want to build. This whole organization is a form of being able to maintain and create community. It's just now it's an active thing. It's a choice that, you're gonna, that you make. Um, there, is a, uh, there is a concept which is Every human being can hold 140 people in their brain. And how do we know this? Thousands of years ago in villages, before we had technology and before we had all this society, when a village had more than 140 people in it, the 141st person left the village and made a new village. Okay? So even though we have social media and you have like 1,000 people, your brain actually can truly only connect with about 140 people at the most. And then after that, it, it, it weakens. So you want to really think about being able to build a community of that size. And if you have five people, get to six, get to seven. Um, clean your house. Have a creative outlet, right, which is museums, music, art, um, not just, you know, the digital inputs we're getting. Change the scenery, go somewhere else, nature. I personally lived in the West Village and now I moved to Hell's Kitchen and just the act of just Taking my stuff and going from one place to another makes me so happy. Um, communi- so remember I said forgive it weekly. Once a month, make an effort to communicate with someone or resolve an issue. Okay, Because remember, we're building up all this toxic energy. And so we really want to be able to communicate. And I don't mean via text. I mean a phone call. Okay, um, Give charity in some way. Give back. One thing we really lose stake of is wherever you are, someone has it way worse than you do, right? And so if you can think about a charity to join, join a board, give back in some way, it is another way to release that energy. And finally, once a month, remember I said forgive? Forget. Just forget it. Okay? I, I, uh, I run a group of co- coaches and I sent out an email about something, and somebody actually wrote, it, we're a community, they were like, Eric, can you not send out any emails because it clogs up my email box? And I'm like, you're in a community and you don't want one email. And you know what I decided? I'm like, I'm not even gonna respond to it, I'm just gonna forget about it. I'm not doing a very good job forgetting about it because I just brought it up again, but I'm working on that. Okay, so now let's do some annual commitments. So this is something you wanna do once a year. Okay, number one is make an annual goal. Okay, or actually three, one career, one personal, and maybe one communal. Create a COVID time capsule. Take five things from this experience that we've all been in and get a little box and put them in the box. Because three years from now, when we have just the most amazing things happening in the world, you're gonna forget what you learned now. And then you're going to open up that box and you're like, Eric told me that I had memories in those boxes and they were important because we all have learned some very powerful lessons that we want to take with us. Um, like I said about the hockey puck, a three-year career plan. Find a person older and wiser, and they don't have to be older, they should be wiser than you, as a mentor, a coach, or a best friend to help you and hold you accountable to your career plan. 
Um, once a year, reset one part of your life. Okay? So start over. I mean, I, I work with a lot of people in industries that have died. Okay? Like I work with a lot of people in the magazine business. And I say, you don't even read a magazine. Right? And the only magazines I ever buy are at the airport. Now I don't go to the airport. So you know what? You got to start over. Um, and then also make new friends. It's very good. And look, I'm making new friends today. All right. All right. We, okay. So that's the, um, that's the presentation part. And now we have a really quick game. And a winner will win like, uh, I have these notebooks. You see? It's like a career notebook. So the winner's going to get the notebook. Okay, but here's what you got to do. You want to name, here we go. You ready? I want, you have to name five artists, one that starts, that start with the letter J, and one from the 70s, 80s, 90s, the aughts, and the teens. And you can't make it misspelling, but you can use, as we say, you can use the Google. Okay? So whoever can put all five, one from each decade, in the chat first wins. And Ricky, you're the judge, I think. Okay? Yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. All right. We have our first entry. I can't say them out loud because we got I don't want to give away the answers. I think they're Google. What do you think, Ricky? You think they're Googling? Yes. I would be. Yeah. If I knew I could win something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You gotta do all five at once. Yeah, you gotta do all five at once. <laughs> okay, Michael, we forgive you, but it was a good one. Yeah, because if you do them, if you do them, oh. one time, okay. Ooh, I don't know. I think I think I think Jeffrey, Jeffrey might have just gotten it. Mm. Who's the t Who's the? Well, I guess it's about being prevalent still. So Justin Timberlake still and J Lo are still quite prevalent. Yeah, I think, I think I've got it. We might have a misspelling on the last one. Uh, Is that the spell? <laughs> <laughs> I th he fixed it though so i think i think jeffrey won i think he did but what did he, but kristen's got one oh okay. but it was a speed it was a speed exercise and jeffrey won i'm sticking to it all right okay ricky she she uh she <laughs> this is fun um but yeah, uh, pay, we have a good fan favorite. All right, excellent. All right, that was very good. So you're going to win a prize. Who won? What's his name again? It's Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey Maxi. Okay. Jeffrey's going to have to reach out to me and find me, and I will send him his prize. <laughs> Great job, Jeffrey. Okay, good. All right, so now we're, we're ready for questions. So um, if you can submit your career questions, uh, Bridget, my, uh, my, my colleague, will uh, try to find the best questions that can uh, help the most people. So try to make your question slightly general so that I can relate it. But if it's specific, then I can help. So please share. These are good questions. Okay, I think I got a couple I could work with. You think so, Bridget? Okay. Um, so, let me, I'm gonna, okay, so let, let, let's, Okay, let me, let me do the, the mission statement one first, which we talked about in the beginning. So remember, you came up with your four words. Okay, so your, your homework on this is to take those four words and create a sentence. The sentence is going to have three parts. It's going to have some verbs, a verb or two verbs, an adverb, and I remember this from high school, an adverb describes a verb, and then an end result. So a super ex easy example is, I walk to the store slowly to buy milk, okay? So what you wanna do is take your four words and you wanna be able to say, okay, how do I wanna be acting every day? How do I wanna be while I'm doing that? And what do I wanna get, okay? So you could say, 
you know, I want to contribute to my field, feeling confident to share love and kindness all around the world. Okay? But you want to try to do that with your words. Now, when you do it, it takes, I mean, you keep, you keep working it until it's something you could actually say in an interview or you could say to a friend and it would really resonate. Okay. Um, so then, so then we got a question about what, do, uh, what do we think about boundaries? Okay. So, uh, when I gave you this example about how to spend your day, your week, your month, right? The issue is, is that's about building boundaries. So when I'm saying design your week, it's your week. What we call it in coaching, it's called a POS, which stands for personal operating system. You create your own personal operating system. In that system, you're creating boundaries. Um, and then the only person that can honor your boundaries is yourself. Okay. Where people make a mistake, though, is they make boundaries made of stone. So someone breaks their boundary, they're like, how rude, how could you call me at 9 a.m.? That's my time, I need my time. Okay. Versus glass boundaries, which is to be able to be respectful of the fact that you have boundaries and other people have boundaries and you can communicate them. Okay. So boundaries are the key to all that I'm talking about and being able to establish them and work with them is an art, a, a great art. Okay. Then let's see another one. How to limit social media using, but marketing now is all there. Okay. What I do. So, so the way I kind of manage my social media is I wake up in the morning and I go on Instagram. I write, a positive post, something inspirational. I do a couple Instagram stories and that's it. I'm done for the day. Okay. So I'm contributing positivity into social media. And then that is the length of use that I'm using it for. If I was doing a career search or in my case as a coach, I will spend another hour looking at individuals that I relate to, to see things that are relevant for what I'm doing. Okay. Then if someone makes me feel bad or miserable or bad about myself or trolls me, I'll block them or I'll mute them because that's a boundary thing. I don't need your negativity in my space. It used to be before social media, you could yell at me from across the street and I couldn't hear you. And now with my phone, you can come into my house and call me a loser. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, tips for popping out of pandemic funks when they come up. I like that question. Okay, we all have them. Because there are some days I wake up and I go, this is so stupid, right? This is no way to live a life, right? So number one, when you get into a pandemic funk, it's really try to make it a day. Allow yourself a day. Remember how I said we have these patterns? So then you go say, but tomorrow I'm going to get up, I'm going to follow Let's say five daily habits, and I'm going to do those habits, even if I'm in a funk. Okay. Secondly, get like if you're really in it, get help, get a therapist, get a coach, get a happy friend. Don't try to figure all this out on your own because some of these, this situation is really people. Are, we've you know lost family members, we've lost people we care about, um, all these things. So it's real. This isn't in your head sad. This is really sad. So honoring that emotion and letting yourself feeling it, but then still going back to good habits will make the dip not as dippy. Okay. Is it, uh, okay, next question. How do you figure out what part of your life to reset? So when something isn't working for a really long time, you're going to sound like a broken record. So if you like, for example, when I coach people and they don't like their boss, for me, it's like, you probably can talk about that three or four times. The fifth time I'll say to you, you're benefiting from this. You like it this way. Otherwise you would change it. I'm not a therapist. I'm not going in the past and figuring out why mommy and daddy made you end up in this situation. The fifth time you're saying this, you like it this way. So the best way to know that there's a situation where you need to reset is you keep repeating the same thing. Okay. And that, that, that will give you a clue. Um, that's one way to know when to reset. The other thing, remember what I said was, if you're in a job for 12 years, you should have mastered it. The 12th year, you probably will start to get bored. 
you'll feel bored or you'll think it's too easy and you won't be stimulated. Then the next clue is you start to self-sabotage. So one way or another, you're going to get out of the situation. So sometimes what people do is they start to, um, to do that. Okay. Next question. Is it ever too late to change careers? No, never. Here's what I always like to tell people. A hundred years ago, women died at 14 in childbirth and men worked in a coal mine. Okay, so there were no life coaches and there were no career coaches because people like the average life age was 32. But all the way careers in society have been built is like, you know, you pick a job and you do it for the rest of your life. Right. And then say 30 years ago, you were either a doctor or a lawyer. Right. There was like a label that you were a doctor or a lawyer. Okay, so. Like I talked about in the 80s when they did outsourcing of companies, people couldn't stay in jobs for 30 years because they got laid off. So the idea is you have to really constantly be in career evolution. Plus, the speed of technology is going so super fast now. You were all sort of out of a, out of a part of our jobs because technology is going that fast. So it's never too late. It's an imperative to be willing to change. It's not easy to change. It's why there are professionals like me that help people navigate that journey. Okay, I answered that one. Uh, how do I decide whether to continue in self-employment or get a job in the same field as an older professional? How do I decide whether to continue or get a job in the same field as an older Okay, that's a good question. So the thing I've, I told you about self-employment versus uh, working at a company, it really has to do with your sort of your personal makeup, like who you are, how you are, how you feel about it, and your risk level. In terms of deciding where to work and who to work, remember I said, find a mentor, someone you respect, someone maybe in the guild that you can connect with to give you their career experience, but their career experience is not yours because the world's changed. But you want to get feedback to understand that situation. Okay, I think I got one, time for one more question. Yes. Um, when you have changed career after achieving expert status in a different category besides coaching, how do you find mentors who have actually guided your new career? That's a great question, um, Kristen. So what, I wasn't a coach, and for 15 years I was an HR consultant. So number one is when you want to change, you have to humble yourself. Okay, you're no longer you're not an expert in this new thing. You are a new learner novice. Okay, so you want to seek out people that are experts and ask for advice or perspective. And you don't do that for free. You give them something in return. You respect their journey by offering them a connection. If they charge, you would pay for it. Um, and um, also nowadays, there's a thing called Instagram. And basically what you can do is you can find someone, you can direct message them, and they're going to respond to you because that's all been democratized then I would give myself probably three years to start to evolve in that new career, to start to grow and not, uh, you got to give yourself patience and time uh, in order to uh, start to become better in this new thing. But you're bringing all your old skills. So I have my HR background. I use those skills for, for what I'm doing. Um, okay, Bridget, do I have time for one more? I got two minutes left. So I think it's like, it's the goodbye time. Yeah, I think so. You could handle Noel's question. Answer Noel's question. At the start of your career in the arts, not always, but a lot of, well, I'm losing it, but a lot of the time you find yourself doing a bunch of different things. For instance, I teach part-time, I play piano, bars, performing pre-COVID to pay bills. My ultimate goal is to only composer. How to manage time and focus on biggest goal while spread so thin out of necessity? Noel, it's a very good question. So when I was first became a coach, I still did consulting. And it was probably 75% consulting, 25% coaching. So what you want to do is if it's called job crafting, which is at first, you know, maybe you're doing five different things. So what you want to do is keep like measuring the percentage of time on each. And then when you get, let's say composer, when it's about 25%, what I ask you to do is give up one of the other four that are making money for you. Okay. It needs to hurt a little. In other words, you need to let go of something that's easy in the past 
to propel yourself forward. You're going to push yourself harder. But if somehow you're getting the money from the other four, you're going to stop. So it's a complete like trade-off, trade-off, trade-off until let's say you're 82% composer. And you know what? 82% is enough. It's good. It's fine. If you're making money another way in Yiddish, I'm Jewish, it's called a geschäft. It's a side business. And everybody should have a geschäft. Okay? So it's your side hustle. So it's really from Europe 500 years ago. So um, that's my answer. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. And I think that um, everyone should stick around for a moment for some information on the GMS conference tomorrow. And I think Ricky or Ed is going to pick that up. Yeah. Well, thank you, first of all, everybody. Thank you, Ricky, um, for being part. And Eric, I'm going to write a book. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, that's the next on my agenda. Um, fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, our series on on you know, mental health and well-being, um, certainly through, you know, this this COVID time and all. Uh, it's just another part of what the Guild provides for our members. And so uh, I'm proud as well as I'm sure everybody else that's been, been uh, involved in this as well. Um, so our next one, oh my God, Ricky, when is the next one? Do you have it in front of you? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to- I <laughs> know you messed up. Um, we'll be sending out, you know, um, I think it's next month. Um, so you'll be seeing that after the conference at some point, a little, uh, um, uh, blurb on that. So just look forward to that and stuff like that. Uh, and it's March 17th. Oh, thank you very much, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, so we want everybody to come back and, and, uh, uh, um, come back and enjoy yourself on those and learn something. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan Zelban, who's an East Coast uh, member, committee member as well, um, who's very much part of the educational conferences happening. He's just going to give you a, a little update. But again, appreciate everybody participating. Eric, thank you so much, man. I think everybody really dug it very much. And, uh, and by the way, give out, I'm just saying, if you want to give out your email so somebody can reach out to you, I will make a preference like you're doing this as a favor. Okay, so that, you know, obviously people reach out to you and stuff. Um, uh, you can talk to them about how you deal with your, your business and so forth like that. But do you want to give out your email address or something to people to have or? Yeah. Um, yes, it's uh, Eric, E-R-I-C, at gem, G-E-M, dot coach. And I awesome. think, Ricky, this is going to get shared somewhere, right? The whole video. Yeah. Uh, we do record it. It is recorded. It comes up on our on our platforms. Um, you know, if obviously, you know, we can give you access to it and, and so forth. But it does go up on our platforms for our membership who weren't able to to view it, to see it, and people who saw it and want to refresh it, they can do that as well. And the other thing is, you can follow me on Instagram at Jem Eric Horowitz, and that's there's one O in Horowitz, and I do daily inspiration. Every day. So when you wake up in your daily habits, you're like, you look at my Instagram or my Instagram story, and you're like, oh my God, okay, get up, get going, write that book. And thank you. Well, and uh, a shout out, by the way, to Levi Downey, who is always there for us. He runs our production uh, out of the West Coast for the Guild. So all these webinars you guys see and everything else, and he's the guy that uh, really sort of makes it work. Um, so I want to always give him a shout out when we can. Thank you again. We'll see you next month. Enjoy the conference.